Hello, I'm Sean Green with Sports Night. Well, the Barbados Pride crushed the TNT Red Force by 299 runs at Kensington Oval this morning in their fifth round game to maintain their lead in the West Indies Championship. Keon Harding collected 5 for 19 to finish with his maiden 10 wicket haul as the visitors crumbled for just 77 in their second innings, chasing a target of 376. After a wicket of the very first ball of the day and wicket number six falling shortly after, this happened. Terence Hines clearing the front leg and skying it. Shane Dorrit says, I'll take it. That's a wicket to Keon Rocky Harding. Akil Hussein facing Shamar Holder, edging through a vacant third slip and frantically being chased down by the fielder who puts in a slide, but all in vain. That's four. Byron Charles was next in and next out for a duck. Caught at short fine leg of all places. Beautiful catch by Shamar Brooks. And Harden has his fourth, a 60 for eight. Hussein was still trying to steady the ship for TNT. Driving and getting four off the edge, down to third man. Then off the very next ball, he tickles one fine to collect back-to-back -back boundaries off Holder. But Holder is a very clever bowler coming back to beat him outside the off stump with a beautiful delivery, giving him something to think about. However, Hussein didn't have much time to think because of the very next ball, he was caught behind, naked one that left him. He made 21. Red Force on their knees at 75 for 9. And Keon Rocky Harden ended the game in spectacular fashion. Clean ball in Uthman Mohammed for 3. Got spraddling TNT for 77. Now, the man of the match in that Barbados game was opener Shane Mosley for his innings of 155. Um, I feel very good about the performance. Been working very hard coming into the season. I mean, at the beginning, it wasn't quite going the way that I wanted it to go, but you know, just keep fighting and keep sticking to the process, and I got the results this game. Do you have any goals set for yourself this season? I'm um, normally able to set goals, but this season my goal is just to keep repeating the process as often as possible, and you know, if I keep doing that, then I know the results will take care of itself. So scores in that game, the Pride 209 and 342 for 5. Red Force 175 and 77. Scores in the other matches in Jamaica, the Scorpions 385 and 36 for 2. The Leewards 227 and 294. And in Grenada, the Windwards 318 and 273 for 1. With Devon Smith getting 147 and Kevin Hodge getting 100. The Jaguars 426. To football now, Silver Sands FC took its first win and handed Empire Club its first defeat in last night's continuation of the Coca-Cola BFA Premier League. In the meantime, Notre Dame and the St. Andrew Lions had to share points in a one-all draw. CBC's Melissa Farley tells us more. It took 34 minutes before the first goal was posted in this clash between Dames in yellow and the Lions. And Dames were the ones pushing forward through Zico Edmi, beating the defender and then easy access past the keeper. 1-0 the score at the half. It then took some 13 minutes into the second session for Lions to bring it on even terms. Arantes Lawrence posting the equalizer on a one-man mission. No assistance needed. But as time crept away and the final whistle blew, one all was the final score. On to the clash with Silver Sands and Empire in blue. It took a little longer to witness goal number one. It eventually came two minutes before the first half came to an end. Romario Clark making sure his name was the first on the scorecard and Empire up 1-0 at the half. Second half action now. Fast forward to the 63rd minute. Total teamwork for this one, and Chicago Scott leveled up for Silver Sands. Then five minutes after, Deshaun Bino broke the lock and put Silver Sands up 2-1. Silver Sands then extended the score in the 88th minute. It was all Derek Gale Ford and the keeper. And there goes goal number three. 3-1 to Silver Sands, but Empire will pull one back in a late effort in the two minutes added on to regulation time. And Jamar Grazek took the final score, three goals to two, victory to Silver Sands. Melissa Farley, CBC Sports. It was deja vu at the Garrison Savannah yesterday. The three-year-old ridden by Rashid Hughes took the Michael Parvacino Memorial Hopeful Breeze and Stakes Trophy in the Realtors Limited Race Day. The leader is very early, conflict of interest, who 
has gone off to lead from Deja Vu in second. The scraping ground along the inside is Ollivander. Then there's Semper Fi, Whispering Angel, Pace of Plastic. Then behind these comes Undisputed. Jordan is next one through. Oprah has one beaten, and that's St. David's, who's a long way back as they go past the five for low marker. The opening quarter, 26 and 4. So Ricky Walker trying to temper the early aggression of conflict of interest. In front by just about two lengths for Deja Vu. Rashid Hughes pays close attention. Down the inside, Delano Lopez has Ollivander. Sample is on the outside of that one moving up. Then Undisputed comes under a right. So to Whispering Angel, Jordan Hardridden. Oprah yet to find her best stride. And St. David's can be safely discarded at this point. They go past the three for low marker. The half mile completed in 51 and 2. Uh, it is still conflict of interest, being pressed now by Deja Vu, and on the outside, Semper Fi. These three have separated themselves by some six or seven lengths to Undisputed. And there are no more turns. And uh, it is conflict of interest in front. On the outside, here's Deja Vu to ask a question. Inside the final for long they come. It's Deja Vu, a conflict of interest. Deja Vu under right-handed encouragement. Starts to dash away. You can sing this field a lot of way. They have been put to bed. Deja Vu in front by three. Conflict of interest, best of the rest. The winner stops the clock in 138 and three.